Hi, we're excited to be joining you today to talk about a topic that may seem daunting, yet is becoming, if not already, a key focus for businesses. I was reading a book recently on the technology innovations that are likely to reshape businesses in the next decade, and a quote that really stood out to me was, every company will become a technology company, every company will become a data company. That may seem far-fetched for some of you, and for others you're thinking, absolutely see what you mean. And that will depend on the context of your work and the sector or industry that you are in. However, if we start from this point, then how we control and manage data is going to be key to future success. Over the next 30 minutes, we will share some thoughts on data governance, dive deeper into data quality and how Legend can help you bring this to life, and finally look at how data governance is being considered in the collaborative opportunities across the financial industry to build confidence and adoption so that as an industry we are pressing towards the technology innovation evolving around us. Although I'm speaking to you in digital form right now, I am also in the room with you during the conference here in London and hope to be in New York later in the year. I'm also joined by my colleague Beaker from New York, so let's start by introducing ourselves. I'm Fionn Ackland, an Executive Director in Data Engineering at Goldman Sachs. I co-manage our global data models and governance team, focused on supporting the global markets division and acting as a consultant to other areas of the business. Prior to this role, I spent six years in operations supporting our credit trading desk, so I felt firsthand the complexities of managing large data sets, and it's definitely set me up for the role I'm in now, both at the firm and in the industry. I also have the pleasure of co-leading the Finos Financial SIG and interacting with many of you to drive the industry forward. Bika, do you want to introduce yourself too? Yes, thanks so much, Fee, and hello everyone, and thanks so much for joining our presentation today. I'm Bika, Vice President in Data Engineering at Goldman Sachs, and I'm managing the program to open source Legend and also work as a product manager for the Legend stack. This role entails a lot of exciting responsibilities, one of which is being able to talk about Legend with the awesome open source community. Fun fact about me, I'm originally from Germany but lived in five different countries, and I may be one of the very few Germans that don't like eating potatoes. So let's jump straight in. Data governance can cover a vast array of concepts, and your context is going to drive which of those are more important to you. It is said that data is the source of knowledge in the digital era that we find ourselves in. Even considering our interactions in daily life, we rely on data and being able to query data quickly. I'm sure many of you travelled here today on public transport. You may have queried train times, relied on the underground status boards, or perhaps you ordered an Uber. I'm sure there are many of you out there that perhaps bucked that trend too. But in all of these scenarios, you were relying on the data that was made available to you, and reliance was being the key here. The same is the case in our working environments. We are all dealing with data in some form, whether you produce the data, consume the data, or maintain the data, having a level of control relevant to the use case is definitely necessary. In the financial industry, there are both internal and external factors that drive this need. Externally, being able to deliver exceptional client service is top of the list, and this includes being able to exchange accurate data in an efficient manner to keep up with the moving markets, while also transforming large sets of data in many different ways to meet post-trade obligations such as confirmation and settlements. Another post-trade obligation is meeting the regulatory mandates imposed on firms. Over the past 15 years, regulations have been introduced as a governance structure to data at an industry level, and this has meant that each individual firm has their own data governance requirements to ensure that the data being shared is accurate, complete, timely, and traced back to source. From an internal perspective, data is the baseline to driving business decisions and allowing secure risk and control management. This isn't purely at a monetary business level, although clearly that is important to running the revenue divisions of a firm, but data is driving people decisions in HR and environmental impacts from location and office strategies, just to name a few. Hopefully I've convinced you that data governance is important, regardless of your current focus and work scenario. So what do we mean by data governance? I've mentioned a few concepts already. But let's take a look at a couple of the definitions that may come to mind when someone says data governance. So firstly, ownership, privacy and security. This we're thinking about is the data stored in a secure manner, who has access to that data, perhaps another word you would consider is entitlements. 
For example, if we're thinking about our own personal data and the organisations that store that, we want to have peace of mind that it isn't available just to everybody. The next one I have mentioned before, but regulations have themselves been a form of data governance, um, especially for regulators across the globe. And not to mention that therefore we have to have our own data governance internally at each individual firm to be able to actually meet those regulations. And over the past few years, this has continued to increase and I'm sure it's not going to be going away anytime soon. Lineage and contracts. For this one, we're thinking about where does my data come from? What service level agreements are in place for me to access that data? Does the person who even is the producer of this data know that I'm using it? And what happens if I or they change something? These are all questions that can be answered and maintained if documented clearly and agreed by both parties through data contracts. With the amount of data available today, knowing which version of the data you're using and whether new versions have been made available is highly valuable to ensure information isn't going stale. We will look at this one a little bit later in the presentation in the, in, in the context of industry standards. But for the rest of the presentation, we want to focus on data quality. And data quality itself has many facets, but the few you'll hear us coming back to are accuracy, completeness, timeliness and traceability. We aim to show you how Legend provides executable logic to impart this level of quality on your data such that you'll be confident in using it. Thanks so much, Fee, for telling us more about data governance and bringing up the importance of data quality in that context. I'd like to dive a little bit deeper into the subject, specifically how Legend may be able to help increase data quality in each individual organization. But first, let's take a step back. Let's imagine we work in a firm that is interested in getting data about the vaccination status of its employees as part of their return to the office strategy. That may sound simple, but in reality, getting high quality data that are relevant for your use case and actionable can be quite tricky. So let's take a look at how a typical scenario to retrieve raw data for a business-driven report may look like. You can see at the top uh, here what kind of report we have in mind. It should list the legal entity, office location, the employee's names, and their vaccination status. But how do we get the data? In our hypothetical firm, there are three databases, a firm database, a person database, and a vaccine database that stores the information we are interested in. What you can notice here are the fairly cryptic column names of the data sets. Someone that is less familiar with the database schema or the data itself may not know directly which columns are of interest for their particular use case. To now actually retrieve the data, we may have to use SQL or any other query method to extract the data from the different databases. We may even have to use some Excel magic to merge the different data sets into one coherent report. Long story short, this is likely going to be a multi-step, manual, and error-prone process that can only be performed by a quiet tech-savvy person. So bringing this into the context of data quality, you may notice the following problems. It may be tricky to ensure that our data sets are complete as it's difficult to identify the right databases and columns, as well as understand how the data is related to each other. It may also be difficult to ensure the data is accurate, as the process of data extraction and curation is quite manual. The business consumer may also need to solely rely on the accuracy of the query written by the developer, with little opportunity to validate the data by herself. Lastly, there's little transparency about the origins of the data and how it got transformed along the way. If the data is being moved or altered, our queries break, and we, as the business consumer, may have no idea what happened. So, may there be a better way? And as you may be guessing right, the answer to that question is yes, there is with Legend. So, what is Legend? Legend is a free, open source data management software. We work together with Finos to make the code available on GitHub for everyone to install Legend um, on their own premises. Finos is also hosting a public shared version of Legend on their servers. 
And we will talk more about the industry collaboration happening on that version of Legend later on in the presentation. Legend has been in the works for a number of years at Goldman Sachs, and internally we have about 10,000 daily active users uh, across many different divisions. We developed the platform because we've se seen firsthand the struggle with data silos, duplication, and quality as the complexity of data accelerated dramatically. With Legend, there is now a free solution on the market that aims at providing efficient and reliable solutions to get access to data that is accurate, timely, and safe. The heart of the platform is Legend Studio, a data modeling environment that allows users to define business-friendly uh, business concepts connect disparate data sets and visualize model data for easier collaboration. And most importantly, Legend allows developers and non-developers to work together on the same platform through its intuitive and flexible interface. So let's take a look at Legend more closely in the context of the use case discussed earlier. Instead of querying raw data, we can build a data model with Legend Studio and query model data. You can see um, a data model that would work for our use case here on the slide. i walk you through it in just a second, but first, let's take a step back and define what a data model is. Simply put, a data model allows you to build a better understanding of your data by creating business-friendly concepts and descriptions of your data and define data relationships. By doing this, Data models add a layer of abstraction on, on top of your raw data to organize it and make it more usable and actionable across a variety of use cases. Concretely, where we had very cryptic column names before, we can now define business-friendly concepts that are relevant and meaningful to us, specifically a firm class, an employee class, and an office location class. We can further define attributes such as first name and last name for our employee class to, to define uh, the introduced concepts in more detail. We can also specify how these concepts are related to each other. Our firm, for example, can have one or many office locations or either no or many employees. And this entire data model that you can see here has been created in Legend without writing a single line of code. In the context of data quality, that is fairly important as data can now be described and agreed upon across different teams independent of their technical knowledge. This tackles the historic divide between business and tech teams, or differently said, the consumers and producers of your data. Lastly, you can see here that our relational databases that store the data we are interested in are mapped to our data model. And these data stores can be of different types and scattered across the organization. Legend brings all of these together in one coherent data model. And then users can actually execute queries using model data, making use of the, pow of the, powerful, um, of the powerful execution engine that Legend has. Thanks, Beaker. Do you mind if I ask a couple of questions as we're going through this next bit? Yeah, of course. You've made it really clear why we need data models. I'm just wondering, as a person less familiar with this use case, is there a feature that would make it easier for me to navigate the data model and identify relevant concepts? Yes, there is. I could help you navigate the data model a little bit better by adding descriptions via tag values. You can see an example here on the slide where I added an alias for firm, namely organization, to enable you to search, um, search key concepts using different terms. Making it easier for people to search across the data model can definitely help to reduce data duplication, as it facilitates reusing existing concepts and mappings to data stores. It's especially easy to look for these descriptions in the actual data model code in text mode. Oh, what, what's this text code? Well, um, users can easily switch back and forth between a business-friendly user interface and the actual uh, code of the data model in Legend Studio's text mode. 
and changes made in either view are seamlessly translated. One more thing to make it easy for developers and non-developers to collaborate using the same platform. That's, that's really great. I'd like to come back to that point that you made on avoiding data duplication. Is there another feature in the platform that would help with that? Uh, yes. Do you, do you see the arrow pointing to legal entity class? This adds a hierarchical layer to your data model in which the firm class inherits all the attributes of, legal, of the legal entity class. In legend, this is called supertype. This reduces the need to recreate attributes and allows users to leverage existing defined relationships and mappings to data stores. I see. So just to check my understanding, the additional descriptions to the classes, the attribute or class inheritance, and the ability to map your data model to databases can really reduce data duplication. It allows people to identify authoritative data sources and then either inherit the attributes or map those to your own use case. Exactly. And all of this may likely lead to more accurate and complete data. That's good. Uh, further looking at your data model, I assume vaccination status is something that's considered quite sensitive. Um, how can we ensure that people know this when they're handling the data? You're right. Like That's absolutely something we have to keep in mind. And Legend allows you to add labels to your classes and attributes via stereotypes. In this case, we can add a sensitive label to both the employee class as well as the vaccination status uh, attribute. This feature is quite helpful in drawing attention to um, data that may need specific entitlements. The owner of the data can then make sure it's properly entitled and only Legend users who are allowed to can then access it. Great. I love that Legend can help ensure data isn't getting into the right hands or wrong hands. Even. On a different note, can Legend help ensure that when I query model data, I get the data in the format that I'm interested in? Yeah, absolutely. There are actually quite a few different ways we can accomplish that. For every attribute in our data model, we can, see, uh, we can specify the data type. For example, if you only expect numeric and date entries, you can indicate this via the respective data type. Equally, you can also specify which fields are mandatory versus optional, or how many values you're expecting to retrieve by defining the cardinality. OK, that's good to know. Um, what if I want to restrict the actual values that are returned to me in my query? So if you know the data quite well, you can specify valid entries via enumerations in Legend. For example, I predefined the valid entries for my vaccination status. Uh, namely being uh, fully vaccinated, not vaccinated, and first shot only. That really helps making sure that the data consumed is accurate. Uh, so these were all great questions, V. Thanks so much. Um, and I'd like to continue, and we touched, about, uh, we touched upon this already quite a bit, but, but I would like to spend a few minutes on data accessibility through Legend. An important factor in data quality is to make sure that data can be safely accessed and, um, and consumed by, by the end consumers. Ideally, the data return should also be easily understood by the consumer. And even better, data consumers should be empowered to build data queries all by themselves without, need, without the need to know any coding language. That way, they can make sure they really get the data they want. All of this is possible through Legend. Data consumers can use business-friendly terms from the data model and create queries drag and drop style. And that's exactly what I've done to create the report we wanted to see at the beginning right here in Legend. So what I did is basically just dragged the business concepts that were of interest to me, such as office location, into the execution panel, and then all what I, what I needed to do was hit play and get my data. For enhanced transparency, Legend also makes it easy for consumers to understand how the physical data sources have been mapped to the data model attributes. You can see the mapping details here on the slide. Making it clear to consumers of your data where the information is coming from is a key ingredient for high-quality data. 
And lastly, I'd like to mention that legend also allows for programmatic consumption of model data, not only via ad hoc queries. Users can create APIs with a simple click of a button and consume them via executable JAR files in their Java application. We are also working on making consumption via REST APIs um, possible. Hence, high quality model data can be used systematically in any production process. This is so helpful. I have one more question though. Uh, what if I'm interested in a slightly different query? So I'm only interested in the status of vaccinated and not vaccinated. Maybe that'll be important if governments start to mandate that only fully vaccinated individuals are back into offices, for example. Do I have to create my own data model for this? No, you, you don't. You can build your own transformation from the model that I built to the one that you want to see. We do a model-to-model -model mapping in this, in this case, mapping the enumeration values I specified to the ones you have in mind. And in the context of data quality, you'd still see the original shape of the data and how it got transformed along the way, creating lineage of your data. You can see the model-to-model -model mapping and the slightly different query results here on the slide. An interesting point to bring up here is that you can see how accuracy of the data is very subjective to the individual use case. Your expectation towards receiving accurate data is different from the one that I had originally. And Legend is providing the flexibility to end users to bring the data into the shape and quality they want to see. That's so true. And I'm just thinking, perhaps the government only put this mandate in terms of fully vaccinated uh, people on firms that have more than 100 employees. Is that something that I could also specify in my model? Uh, yes, absolutely. So what you can do is basically just add a constraint on your firm class, which adds a validation rule to your data model. So if you're executing your query, Legend would return a defect if the firm does not have at least 100 employees. And these constraints can be both on the source class and the target class, which may enable interesting and complex cross-divisional consumer and producer constraints. Thanks so much, Bika, for, for taking us through that. And in an attempt to summarize all that you've just seen, Legend as a toolkit offers an interactive way to instill data quality as you build data models and query data sets. The main aspects of data quality that we have shown through the features of Legend are completeness with the likes of cardinality and enumerations, accuracy through data types and constraints, timeliness by reducing duplication through the clear definitions and tagged values and also having a look at sort of those class and attribute inheritance. And finally, traceability, looking at model to model mappings, whether that be relational mappings to data sets or producer to consumer mappings. And all of this encompassed by being able to deliver the feature of privacy on sensitive data. All of these concepts you may be facing for yourself at the moment. If you're a producer of data, how can you help your consumers by building logical, easy to understand data models on top of your data sets? As a consumer, do you want to be able to start building a model to your specific requirements? Or as an engineer, are you currently feeling stuck in the middle? And could you help connect your producers and consumers directly using this tool? All of those things we have been able to do using Legend at our firm. And so it's definitely possible, regardless of the data problems that you're facing, for you to also install Legend on premise. But Legend isn't only available just for you to download, it's also available on Finos as a shared instance. And it wouldn't be a Finos session without us mentioning collaboration and the industry working together. So to close this session, I want to briefly look at how Legend is helping maintain data quality through the industry efforts to build data standards and in turn improve the operating environment for us all. The financial industry is complex and the data available on financial products alone is, is huge. And so the industry has been collaborating for years in different forums to improve the exchange of data and interoperability of industry participants. In any multi-person setting, change management of data or versioning must be maintained to ensure that data isn't lost and that we avoid duplicating efforts by building upon previous people's work. 
It also makes it easier for new participants to enter and contribute, which is a key tenet to open source. In the case of the financial object SIG and building industry standards such as the, is the CDM, Legend is being used in exactly this way. All data models built in Legend are merged on GitLab, which provides clear history of the contributor and their contribution. Through simple steps on the Legend GUI, you can test your model and code, submit them for review, and merge those into the working version. This ensures that all participants are viewing that latest work and working version of a model to drive consensus. Additionally, the industry bodies that facilitate this collaboration are key to providing oversight and getting the broadest possible participation to the industry standards so that we can ensure when they're created they are reliable and usable in improving the exchange of large data sets in a safe manner. By open sourcing Legend, we are keen to help and see more industry collaboration taking place, working together with our peers on industry standards to solve current data problems felt is key for us to see the financial industry progress towards the technical innovations available to us all. Thank you for spending this time with us today. If you're interested in hearing more on how to share Legend with your organisations, please find me around or email either of us at any time. And there are a number of other resources available to you, so please take a look at the Legend in Action videos on YouTube or have a look at legend.finos.org. Thank you. Yeah, thanks everyone for joining. So, hopefully that was helpful. <laughs> um, yeah, as I said, for those of you who joined us a bit late, my co-presenter is in New York and she couldn't make it over this time around, so we had to record it. So I apologize a little bit that it had to be delivered in that way, but I am here in person. I will be here all day. I'm not sure what we're like for time. I feel like we could be cutting it fine, but if there's a couple of questions, I'm happy to take them now. Um, otherwise, obviously, do come and find me at any point. Yeah, go for it. So from a data catalogue perspective, there is actually another part of Legend. Um, so actually at our firm, we use sort of a slightly different part that's not yet open sourced. Um, I actually don't know if that is in the plan, so I will find out for you um, and confirm. I would say in terms of if you wanted to just document a sort of a list of data attributes, you absolutely could and sort of use Legend in its most basic form in that sense. Um, but there are other aspects, so I'll come back to you um, and I'll check on that. So I wouldn't necessarily say replace. Um, it is obviously similar to that. Um, in terms of how we sort of use this in the firm, it covers across all of our divisions. So we have spoken to a couple of clients as well who are currently connected to Calibra. And I think they are looking at being able to use the two uh, together to sort of bring their full solutions. Um, but yeah, definitely not necessarily a replacement, something that can be used together with it. Obviously at our firm that is this is what we use. Um, and there's a couple of other aspects that we have internally that allow us to do that completely. Um, and some of those will be open sourced uh, in time, but definitely sort of can be used in conjunction after we've been speaking with some of our clients as well. Yeah. Yeah, so at the moment, the external version, and I think I'm going to be right in this, um, can connect to H2 databases. There is a plan, and I'm not sure if it's been announced yet, uh, to connect that to some other external uh, data sets and data providers. So that sort of functionality is being developed upon, but today, externally, it can be put to H2 databases. I think internally, we use it across quite a few. I'm looking at Dave, but he might be able to help. <laughs> Got the, the 
So actually, for, so my team within the firm, specifically for our transactional data, do exactly that. So everyone who uses data, and coming back to that idea of mapping, so that model mapping, that authoritative data source is something that my team own. So we will certify every attribute that's part of that, and someone then has to build a model back to that. So we have to be part of that process to make sure that they're not using something that they shouldn't be. To the extent that they do, it's therefore not certified, <laughs> if that makes sense. So they can go and do that, but there's, there's no one sort of standing behind it. If they come and model to model map into our enterprise models using this, then we as a team stand behind that from the data. That is a little bit beyond my technical <laughs> side of things, but catch me afterwards and I'll chat. Yeah, it'll go back in turning. Yeah. Um, it's essentially a little bit too broad, but I'd be really interested to hear what some of the kind of key learnings you've had um, into open source technology. Like, you know, what have you learned from the community and the other kind of financial organizations now that they've been able to, they've had like about a year, I guess, of, of being able to interact with their different models in terms of that process? Yeah, so I think from the industry perspective, which is the bit that I've been a little bit closer to, um, the big thing is around that need for the SDLC piece, so the bit that I mentioned about sort of the reviews, and at the beginning when we open sourced, actually that wasn't possible on the UI, so you would sort of submit and then still had to go into GitLab <laughs> to do the rest of that process, so that was something that we made available on the GUI very quickly, because even for me, so coming from the business side of things, having to go into GitLab is a little bit alien. Um, I'm getting there, I'm getting used to it, but to be able to do it directly off the GUI means that we can get those business people also engaged in the industry standards very quickly and not assume that they have to then get onto GitLab. Um, they obviously have to have an account, but they can actually do it all from the GUI. So that was something that was really quick that we wanted to get over the line um, to make sure from an industry standards perspective it, it helped. From people downloading it on premise. Um, so when we've been working with clients, um, and I know there's a couple of other banks that have been doing that as well, it's just been really interesting to see how they have integrated it. Um, and I guess every bank is different and has a slightly different uh, way of doing things. So just been interesting to sort of hear where their difficulties have come up, which have just been dif different uh, to ours and sort of being able to improve the system in that sense. What do you mean by the... So if, if the data changes in the core system, presumably it will change in your, in your query results. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything around managing the version of the, the data? Yeah. So within Legend itself, um, before you can send code changes to review, it goes through certain tests. So to the extent that your data model has been connected to your relational database, and any data is changing there, you would get errors in legend directly. Yes, yeah, so if you were to go and run, so if I was a consumer and I was running my mapping, it would tell me that data had changed and was no longer meeting my requirements. So it's not gonna necessarily pick up every change. It would pick up the change that impacted me. We do it with uh, two, two dimensions, which is like processing and business temporality. So you can understand uh, the meaning of the data in business terms as well as how the data is recorded uh, over time. Okay, you can express that as part of the, of the model. Correct. I turn around checking in. Are we? I'm not sure how long we. Okay, sure. Dave, do you want to take that one from a technical standpoint? <laughs> uh, yeah, so it is going back to source systems. There's no, there's no pool of data that you can go 
pooling of data specifically in there. So we do have uh, like uh, a data lake uh, where a lot of this data comes from. So sometimes you know, we, we are either reporting from our data lake or from source systems, and we can, we can do either. Um, in terms of how we do cross-store joins, uh, it varies. Um, but like, it, it's, it involves generally shipping data from one place to another and then uh, doing a consolidated query on it. Great. Well, thanks everybody for joining us. If you have any further questions and the two that I need to follow up, come and grab me and I'll make some notes and take it back and then come back to you. Um, but otherwise, hopefully see you all around and happy to connect at any point. Thank you.